Mann. Hi everybody, welcome back to the channel and welcome to Painting With Your Ultra. We've got the new Harder and Steenbeck Ultra Airbrush. So this is their latest edition airbrush. I did a review for you yesterday on the brush and now we're moving on to this mini series on using the brush, using the settings on the brush and just show you the beginners how easy this brush is to paint with to get these effects down. Now today's video is going to be a candy green marble effect and we're going to be painting on an aluminium composite panel so if you're moving into the airbrush scene and you're really digging the custom paint side of things on cars gas tanks crash helmets anything sort of automotive these sort of panels are the best ones to practice on guys because they are powder coated one side you can clear coat these afterwards and it's the closest sort of look of paint you can get to like an automotive panel so paints we're using today is going to be solvent and water base the ultra will cope with both of these paint schemes absolutely perfect so you've got no worries of putting solvent through it for the first time or even acrylic through it for the first time it's absolutely fine the paint scheme is custom paints we've got a black base coat we've got a green candy we've got their thinner We've got a 2K clear coat with them as well. I'm going to clear coat this panel at the end so you can see what it looks like with clear coat over. And this is what I mean by as close to automotive as you're going to get for practicing on. We've also got a logo. I want to take you through dropping a logo down. So it just gives your panel that little bit more of a twist. You can put some graphics down on it as well. So we're going to go through that process. And it's all going to be done with the Ultra today except for clear coating. The clear coat I'm going to use a bigger spray gun but everything else is based around the Ultra just showing you how easy it is as a beginner to achieve different paint processes with this brush. So enjoy the video, grab yourself a drink because it's going to be quite a long one. I'll set the camera up so you've got an overhead shot and I'm going to talk you through the whole process. So let's get painting with the Ultra. Right guys, we are moving on to the first stage of this custom panel. Now, the first thing you need to do is key the surface up. You have to key the surface up before you paint to make your paint that you're applying adhere to the surface. So you've got a painted side and you need to key it up. So I'm using a 320 Gold Flex Merca soft sponge sanding pad any sort of 320 will do and you just basically lightly go over the surface and scuff it up like that so nice and straightforward scuff your panel up and you will see when you wipe you see the powder that comes off it the paint that's come off that panel then you've got to clean your panel up so i've got some solvent based degreaser we'll drop some on there like that bit of kitchen towel will do or a microfiber clean give your panel a wipe down like that nice and simple and your panel is now prepped for paint so your panels all good to go keep it nice and clean so that's the first stage done nice and simple we'll move on to the next stage and it's going to be applying the base coat to this panel with the ultra drop some paint in the ultra now this is a big panel and a big flat surface so setting on your settings here if you went for prime on the setting i'm running 30 psi in the brush and i'm about five to six inches away from the panel we're just going to give it a try on prime now as you can see this will take a long time to fill this panel up so i'm now going to move it to full trigger so we've got full on the paint and you can just hammer the paint down on full trigger to get the coverage on this big panel so just work your overlaps along it's going to look patchy for a start but we'll build the layers up as we go along 
So just working back and we're aiming to get full coverage. So you are going to take a few passes as this is a big panel basically for an airbrush to cover. Right guys, we got the panel painted. I used full trigger on the Ultra, 30 PSI. I wanted maximum paint flow to get this panel covered because it's quite a big panel. And it's very rare you'd use an airbrush to cover a big sort of panelled area unless you're using sort of mini jet guns where you can just sort of blast over and you get full coverage quick. But the brush did it nice and easy, put a really nice coat down, few passes to cover this up, but the brush achieved it, not a problem on full trigger. So we're going to now move on to the silver. I've got some silver water-based acrylic. We're going to go full trigger again on the ultra. So set your ultra to full trigger, 30 PSI, drop some paint in like that. Now, the next piece that you're going to need to hand is some cling film. You're going to need a sheet of cling film bigger than your panel. So like that to lay over your panel. We're going to spray the silver down. You're not going for a full coverage of silver. You're basically just blasting the silver down really random so it's nice and wet on the panel. And then we will lift the cling film over the top, place it down on the silver paint and press it down and move it around. So you're basically creating a texture underneath the cling film. So we'll blast some silver down, full trigger again, just pull it through and you're aiming just to get some paint down guys. It's not got to look pretty. So random, doesn't matter if it starts to build up and look really wet, just even if you get drops like that, Splatters, doesn't matter, just get the paint on, like that. So nice and simple with a brush. Grab your cling film, place it over the top, press down, like that, move it around. Like that, so you just press in the cling film down and you're creating a texture underneath your panel. So when you pull this away, you get that really nice like marble effect texture. All you've got to do now is let your water base really dry down. So that's the pattern that I'm going to go for. You can get your cling film and you can dab like this to just move the paint around. If you've got some real built up bits that you don't like, you can just manipulate this to what you want, so nice and easy. So I'm gonna go with that. Dry this down. If you've got a hair dryer or a heat gun, you can just waft the hair dryer or heat gun over the top just to cure your paint down. So that's the effect. It's nice and simple to do. It's a marble effect like that. We'll let this dry. You'll see the little air bubbles in it. They'll just all dry down and it'll settle down. I'm gonna clean the brush out again. Same way with the brush. Empty your excess paint that you don't want and because this is water base I'll now drop some water or airbrush cleaner into the brush back into the cleaning pot blast through clean your airbrush through give it a wipe round in the cup and then you're good to go for your next color which is going to be the candy on the top of this so I'll see you in the next step right guys we are moving on to the next stage this is nicely dried down. I just went over this with a hairdryer and just cured that water base down. So you've got a nice textured pattern, as you can see that there, that nice marble effect pattern on that panel. So moving on to the candy green, I've mixed this two to one, cleaned the ultra out, and now I'm gonna set the ultra to base because I don't wanna hammer this down. I want some nice light coats. And at that setting there, Going back, I'm just gonna get them nice light coats. And I'm gonna drop the air pressure down as well to around 20 PSI. So a softer air pressure. We're gonna go in around hands, hands, fist distance away from the panel. Drop some of the candy in. 
just give it a little pull through and now we're just going to do some light passes and candy is transparent so it's probably hard to see on the camera but you'll just build the layers up with the candy as you go along like that we'll have a look at that in the light so it'll be a very light pass but you can see now we're getting a little bit of color down and it's just changing the color of that panel so start working over and the beauty of candies are as well you can get it to the desired effect that you want if you want it a lot greener because we're using the green candy you just put more and more passes across nice and even on your overlap working along and then you'll see your panel become darker green but the beauty of a candy is you will still see this effect underneath so i'm going to do a few more passes off camera get this up to color i'm going to use the same technique with a brush same setting and just build these layers up until i get a desired green that i'm after see you in the next step right guys i've got the candy green down i did six coats on this as I said, candies is like a dye and it's transparent, so you've got to build it up. But you can see the effect underneath the candy. We've got the silver marble effect underneath and then the candy just changes that colour on the panel. Now, I'm going to go back in with the black and we're going to set the ultra to base because I want to do a black feathered in edge around this panel just to darken it off so it looks like the edges are rolling in on the black i have found with this brush as well it cleans really really easy set it to full trigger when you're blasting through and cleaning i dropped because i'm using solvents i dropped a little bit of thinners in blasted through got a bit of kitchen towel wiped the cup and it just came up like mirror finish again really really easy so i've dropped a bit of black in pull that through you go about a hand distance away and we're just gonna fade that edge in so you're aiming just to hit the edge of the panel with the black and just fade that edge so i've got like a black border round the panel five to six inches away set it to base so you can go full trigger and just put a black faded out border round your panel like that so that will do on that pass We'll just hold that up and have a look see that's come out so you've got that nice deep black edge this will look a lot more prominent once it's clear coated it's really hard to pick up on camera what we are looking at but once it's clear coated i'll take it outside in daylight and then you will see the panel so we've got a black fade going round i set that to base coat on the ultra hand distance away sort of like hold your hand up like that and sort of get your brush hand distance away just do a nice pass go fall back on the trigger to your base coat setting and work round like that quickly clean the brush out in your cleaning pot full trigger i'm going to drop a bit of thinners in this because i'm using solvent i'll clean the brush up let this panel dry down and then we'll move on to the graphic in the center and i'll show you how you paint the graphic and now we're going to drop my logo to the center here so dropping these graphics you could do this size graphic basically i'm going to go this straight freehand just pull the backing off like this and then just plonk this i'm not going to measure it in because this is a test panel we're just going to place that on the center like that press that down nice and easy and then you peel away the top piece which leaves your graphic underneath like that so peel away nice and steady and that's your logo down 
you can see that you can see my logo just placed down like that and then you've got to mask off the area because you don't want to get any of the overspray you're painting the letters in over your nice freshly marbled panel so i've got some bits of masking paper just going to lay this down like this round your panel and you're basically masking off the rest of your panel nice and easy like that blank off so you don't get no overspray hitting your freshly painted marble effect underneath you're good to go and now we can move in more a little bit more intricate with the brush we can bring the setting down I think I'm going to take this one down to around the three setting so I've got a nice controller paint we're going to paint this one in white for a start and then my logo is usually red on the dread effects and we've got white on the custom paint so i'm going to get some paint mixed up i'm going to drop a solvent on this a bit of solvent white and then we can go in with an acrylic red over the top of the white on the dread effects part right guys there. we've got the white paint in the brush and i've set this to base so we're going to do the hand distance away again fall back on the trigger and just colour in your logo so we're going full back on that base setting do a pass like that and let that dry down drop a bit of air over it just to dry it down and just keep building it up nice and light build the layers up So you're just aiming for full coverage so that'll do on the white that's a nice coat on the white we'll let that cure down I'm going to buzz the hair dryer over it just to dry it down quicker and then we'll get some red and drop the red on my logo but we've got to mask off the custom paint because I want to keep that crisp white that's all dry and I've just dropped as you can see there a little bit of application tape over the bottom part of my logo because i want to keep that white i've got some red golden high flow acrylics in the brush and i've set this to base so we're running 20 psi and then we can move in closer so just test it on a piece of your paper above and that's the sort of pass you're getting on base like that and I'm about two or three inches away and that's where I sort of want to be just to fill this logo in. So fall back on the trigger and it just puts a nice coat of paint. We're not going too heavy. We're about two or three inches away and we're just building them layers up on that paint like that and I'm going down on the trigger and I'm hitting the base coat stop mark there and I'm just bringing the trigger and rocking it on and off with the paint atomize is really nice Just go over till you get nice full coverage. Blow a bit of air over now and again because you have to do this when you're using acrylics. Try not to go in too heavy too quick. Just build the layers up and then just spray a bit of air over the top just to dry your paint down. So that will do on that pass. That's covered that really nice then you can start to demask now let your paint dry down a bit before you start to demask like that so you'll be left with something like that to remove logos get yourself a scalpel 
and go to the side of the blade and just pick the edge of your mask up like that. Try not to dig into your paint, so very lightly just pick it up, put your finger on the edge and pull away your mask like that. And then to get the inners, you do the same again, just go up to the edge, find where it is, finger on the top and pull away. Like that. And that's your logo down. You've got your marble candy and then your two-tone logo to the top. So really simple, nice and comfortable with the Ultra guys. Yeah. So the next stage on this will be to clear coat it, drop a couple of coats of clear on. I'll do that and then I'll show you when it's finished. There you go guys, I've got it a couple of coats of clear, nothing fancy, it wasn't aiming for a precision flat finish, but it just gives it that gloss to show you what the actual effect looks like with the candy green marble. Really simple effect, and it's just a really cool one to do, guys, it really is. Logos pop really nice now with the clear coat over it, and it was an absolute joy to use the Ultra and use the settings. We didn't use many settings on it because this was a big panel and I had to get a lot of paint down. So I used open trigger to put the black down, then I've dialed in the trigger. I've done it on base to drop the candy down and just took my time and built the candy up. We use the base setting again to go around and dust this black edge round the outside. And then on my logo, I just kept it on the base setting. I just thought that setting was really nice at that distance. I came in about three inches away from the panel on the base setting for the red and just dust it in, work the trigger backwards and forwards to the base coat setting and it got the job done. No clogs, no dramas, easy to clean. Been using solvents and I've been using water-based acrylics. So it was thinners, thinners for the solvent cleaning and then when it came to the water base, I was just blasting through with water. Absolute joy to work with guys, a great brush. So I hope you've enjoyed this first one in the mini series of painting with your Ultra. This was the candy green marble effect. The next one we're gonna do wood grain. So that's a little bit more up close so we can get to use some more features on the Ultra. So thanks for watching. Enjoy your Ultra airbrush and I will see you in the next one guys. Cheers. <laughs>